Welcome everyone to today's session um, in which we will be um, speaking to experts from Tagleaf Industries, a major player in uh, flexibles and labeling materials, um, to explore various European regional perspectives on sustainability and packaging. What are the common challenges and trends in North, South, East and Western Europe? And what are the contrasts that we need to be aware of in terms of infrastructure, market dynamics, consumer attitudes, etc. Uh, I'm very curious myself to, to learn more about this. Um, and I'm really delighted today to, to welcome uh, four speakers from uh, Tagleaf Industries. We have, first of all, Matthias Bredel, who is Regional Sales Manager for North Europe. Luca Bianchetti, Regional Sales Manager for South Europe. Uh, we have Silad Chato, Regional Sales Manager for East Europe. And last but not least, uh, Vivienne Pontieu, who is European Market Manager and will be able to give us um, perspectives about uh, the, the Western European market and, and situation. Um, as I've said to those of you who've been patiently waiting for a while, um, we hope to have time at the end of this session for audience questions, and you can uh, direct those questions to me via the Zoom chat function. So um, I think it'd be good to start off with a kind of high level view. Um, and Matthias, maybe I could ask you to, to begin. Yes, what... thank you very much. Yes, welcome. Yes. <laughs> we haven't said hello yet, have we? Um, <laughs> what, what are the major sustainability trends and challenges that you see in, in Europe as a whole? We'll, we'll start to, to yes. bury into some of these contrasts um, after looking at this big picture. Yes, thank you very much. And of course, a warm hello also from Tuckleaf Industries, from my colleagues and me. Um, we are really looking forward to participate at this uh, session and thanks for the invitation. Coming back to your question, uh, Tim, of course, the trends seem to rotate around. It's about like reducing packaging waste, which is always a major topic, of course, but still packaging needs to be efficient to protect uh, food uh, with uh, this material. And the other way, if you think all over Europe, um, help, help the consumers to understand how to separate and what recycling is, is another major topic, which is a question in our days. We as Tuckleaf um, launched Dynamic Cycle as a holistic sustainability approach to watch the market in 2020. This is not so long ago. But that doesn't mean we, we didn't uh, uh, um, pay attention to sustainability before. Uh, first of all, all our OPP firms, of course, are recyclable. And so they are already supporting the sustainability concept. Uh, secondly, um, bio-based and industrial compostable products like our Nativia range based on PLA or high barrier films like Extendo, which is well established already in the market, have been in our portfolio for many years now, even long before the whole discussion of sustainability ramped up to the level as we have it today. So I believe I can say that uh, Tuckleaf as a global supplier and uh, is committed towards a more sustainable future and, and a circular economy. Concretely, we offer here a, a redesigned service to our, to our customers where we help customers to identify the most suitable packaging and, and labeling film that best meets their needs, but also sustainability, the concept of sustainability for the final product. That's what we do and, and where we believe our customers and the sustainable future benefits the most from. Okay, this is what you. I want to say. Thank you, Matthias. And, and specifically, what, what are the innov innovations across packaging and labeling films your, your customers are asking for? Well, um, as I said, with, with the redesign, we want to com contribute to a change of uh, the future of packaging by offering films with recycled content, that's what we do already, or made from alternative raw materials like bio-based PP, which is a mass balance approach, or also PLA, this is the well-established Nativia range. Uh, we receive requests to replace aluminum film and, for example, also a polyamide, which both um, are not standing on their own in a packaging, are not able to stand alone for a packaging. So they need other films and, um, and, and this is the problem. So we need to substitute such films. And uh, also we have uh, been asked to offer high barrier bio-based films. So there's also a mix in the requests of our customer. This is, we consider it as a huge change uh, which is happening currently. 
and we have a lot of answers for these related questions. Also, we will, of course, still proceed developing uh, film types for the remaining ones, remaining applications. This is an ongoing process in our company, and we are stepping in product segments where we never have been before as an OPP supplier, as there is, for example, coffee packaging, which has always been a, a pet allopee or mainly a pet allopee structure, which is which we are able today to, to redesign to a com complete mono OPP structure. This is what we are doing today. Okay, thank you. Well, let's let's introduce some of our other speakers. Um, let's turn to uh, Luca Bianchetti. Um, hi, Luca. Welcome to the the discussion. Um, yeah, could you could you build on on uh, Matthias's points on on where the, the key areas of uh, innovation are? Yes. Uh, thanks for this question, Tim. Um, first of all, I would say that. Uh, Plastic is for sure uh, an interesting material to be considered also in lamination with other materials. Let's take the case of paper, for example. Talking about, uh, let's say, PP, let's consider how plastic can support the paper regarding all those features that paper from material point of view can't achieve alone, let's say. I don't want to, to go now too much in detail no, uh, about the features uh, that we are all enough aware. But in terms, for example, of ceiling performance and above all barrier and food protection, plastic is the most important support in order to avoid food waste. I heard several times about mixed materials, difficult to be separated, and that cannot be easily recycled. We heard a lot of times, of course. Um, let me also add that uh, we need to remember and to underline maybe how some materials put together can anyway support the purpose of recycling. And this is the very important uh, meaning behind PP with PE, for example, is could be considered like an example, but this is also the case of paper in lamination with PP. Two different materials can support each other and jump into one of the most clear and performing recycling stream that we have, for example, in Italy. I'm talking about Atiselka that clearly states how to recycle paper plus plastic structures into the stream of paper. Another, of course, interesting example is for sure related to PLA potential. And of course, all products um, under the brand of uh, our Nativia solutions, in case of a compostable PLA, laminated with a compostable paper, we could add other potential evaluations to be checked from recyclability point of view and end of life product solutions. Barrier, of course, still remains um, a very important driver to be achieved. And this is also one of the targets where we established are intensively working and investing because we strongly believe that such solution will bring a definitive, further and so important value added solution into the market. Thank you very much. And, and uh, I'd like to bring in Vivian Pontio now. Um, so from your perspective, sitting across the whole of Europe and also um, thinking about Western Europe, um, are there any other perspectives that you think that you would like to build on from, from what the others have, have spoken about reg regarding um, innovation drivers? Yes, yeah, so more specifically in Western Europe, um, we see one, uh, let's say, uh, request on innovation for PP, which is uh, to add new features to polypropylene in terms of barrier. Uh, basically, the context is that uh, today we see recycling stream uh, PP flexible packaging uh, coming reality, especially in France, who announced the plan to set up the flexible uh, packaging stream made from PP. 
to be to start in 2023 and to be consolidated by 2025. <clears throat> and uh, today, uh, most of the barrier firms are using PVDC coating. And uh, it's uh, from common knowledge today that PVDC is impacting negatively the process of recycling. So we have to find alternative solution of PP barrier without using PVDC. Now, um, why this is a challenge? Because as we know, PVDC is offering mm -hmm. an oxygen barrier, uh, which is not a feature naturally provided by PP. And hence, um, the challenge for for Taglif as BioPP supplier is to, is to bring this uh, added feature uh, to PPF without using PVDC. And uh, we answered this, uh, this challenge by offering our range uh, extendo, uh, which is barrier film without PVDC offering high oxygen barrier. In France, it's a high demand specifically more into the segment of bakery and biscuits. Um, I think that uh, most of people know that uh, France market in biscuits and, uh, and bakery products is huge, and uh, they're driving this, uh, this, this innovative concept. Equally in the UK, uh, RAP, who is a waste resource action planning, has already recommended not to use PVDC for packaging in order to be recyclable in the existing or future recycling stream. So, and in Ireland, they also ban, uh, they already banned the PVDC usage in packaging. So in ways like we can consider that uh, barrier film without PVDC is, uh, is, uh, is a strong demand in terms of innovation. Also on top of that, we have a strong demand, uh, so on, stronger, on top of this kind of barrier, oxygen and moisture, we have also a growing demand and uh, concern um, about uh, mineral oil barrier, most commonly called much more. And uh, we have great news because <laughs> Actually, by uh, providing, uh, by, I mean, the technology that we use to provide oxygen barrier in our extender range offers also very high barrier to uh, much more. So we're actually offering all kinds of uh, barriers through that, uh, through that range of products. Now talking more about South, uh, Western Europe, so I'm talking about Spain and Portugal, uh, the main uh, innovation that is uh, demanded there is uh, to offer a different end of life option. So end of life option can be recyclability, but also can be compostability. And uh, in Spain, there is a strong drive for um, compostable uh, packaging. And uh, we, we, we have seen a project and, uh, and the packaging offered on the market using our range uh, uh, Nativia made from PLA, which, which is bio-based and compostable film in an industrial environment, I uh, have to precise, um, mainly laminated with cardboard and, uh, and paper. So this way, the end user can offer compostable and bio-based uh, packaging to the market. Finally, in the whole region, so including France, UK, uh, Spain, and Portugal, we see a high uh, new trend which is to get away from uh, oil resources, which is the main resource to produce PP today, to, uh, to bio-based uh, resources. And so we are today uh, complying with this demand by offering PP, which is made from uh, cooking oil, so a bio-based content. So this is roughly like the, 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 the three main trends that we see in terms of innovation uh, demand in uh, Western Europe. Thank you very much. And, and let's go back to, to Silad. Anything else that you'd like to, to add that you're seeing from your Eastern European perspective uh, of these demands for innovation? Thank you very much. Uh, so um, the, <clears throat> the situation is very similar, uh, uh, also in Eastern Europe. And uh, the solutions uh, mentioned by colleagues on the packaging front are very, uh, let's say, a very high demand also here in Eastern Europe. I mean, first of all, the mono solutions uh, um, uh, to replace the, um, the, the complex uh, structures, which are not recyclable, for example, then the bio-based films are definitely very popular. Uh, I just want to add uh, a very important film uh, on, the, on the label side, which was man not mentioned yet, uh, but also very popular and very unique. Um, and uh, what is the main competitive advantage of this film? Um, that this is uh, a label film, 
uh, shrink slip film called uh, Shape 360. And um, it is light uh, and floatable on the surface of the water, uh, which facilitates the recycling phase of polyester bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, this film, this label film, can be used also uh, on PP or PE containers as well. And in this case, uh, it's compatible with the poly polyolefin recycling stream. So this is what I wanted to complete with. Thank you. Well, that's that's a really interesting snapshot of, of a lot of different trends um, and in, in different kind of uh, approaches to sustainability and secularity, isn't it? Um, Vivian, I, I was interested in your um, reference to the um, compostability bio-based uh, bio uh, trends in, in Western Europe. Do you see more broadly an increase in, in requests for alternative materials for, for labels and packaging? Oh, you're muted. Yep. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, so there is a there's a push for alternative material. So um in alternative material, we have to consider two 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 demands, let's say. So one is from uh, downstream, so the end of life of the product, and one is upstream, which is the resources. So downstream, um, this is clear that uh, everyone is working at making the packaging um recyclable in the existing recycling stream or for the future recycling stream to be in place. Because in Europe, um, not every country is, uh, is at the same stage in terms of uh, PP flexible um, recyclability. So in order to be recyclable or to get recyclable ready, uh, one of the uh, big trends is to move from multi-material to monomaterial. So Matthias uh, stated it in, uh, in his introduction. And actually, you have some structure using different material in the like of PET plus PP, PET plus P, for instance, or uh, polyamide or uh, aluminium foil, which cannot um, on their own uh, be, uh, be a solution for packaging. So um, I would say that this trend is really spread in Europe. It's very well uh, recognized and uh, understood from all countries that they have to uh, to move to polyolefin, uh, polyolefin, sorry, monomaterial structure. Uh, then we have uh, up, so downstream still. Uh, we can also offer, and there's demand for that, alternative end of life option, and one of them is compostability. So compost, but this will have differences uh, within the, the, the countries. So we have, for instance, Spain and Italy are really pushing for uh, this kind of uh, end of life option, while France is a little bit more shy uh, on, uh, on this option. So it all depends, again, on the infrastructure that has been set up uh, till now to collect uh, properly this type of uh, compostable material and to be processed in, uh, in uh, compost, uh, many industrial compost. Now upstream, if you talk about upstream, um, we, uh, we have let's say, demand for alternative materials to use other sources than oil, as I said before for the Western Europe. Uh, but this is also something that is growing among all the, the, the countries in Europe. So two ways is one, to keep the end of life recyclability uh, by offering still PP film, but instead of being made from uh, all resources is being made from uh, bio-based resources. The big advantage here is that uh, we reduce, we help end users to reduce their carbon footprint. So the CO2 emission, which uh, let's say most of them have committed to uh, by the short term. And then we have also, uh, sorry, I can hear someone. Okay. Um, and then so still up, upstream, we can still have bio base, but instead we can also change the, the, the end of life solution by compostability, like the PLA, which is bio based and compostable. So this is the two, the two in one combined. And uh, finally, uh, in terms of resources, so yes, we can move from, um, from our resources, but we can also move from virgin resources by using already used material and that's where uh, the loop is closed by making packaging which is recyclable what do we do with this uh, with this material which is recyclable is to use it again into the packaging and to move that help us to move away from uh, from from uh, virgin packaging 
Uh, this is what we're offering with a film containing a chemical or mechanical recycled content. So we just start, this is really the beginning of this offer um, and uh, it's being consol consolidated. So the supply chain is not yet 100% set up, but this is, uh, this is for sure like a big, uh, this is the future for, uh, for packaging, for flexible packaging. Thank you very much, Vivian. And just a reminder to anyone who's joined um, since we started that um, please keep your microphones muted and your cameras switched off. And also feel free to share your questions with us um, for the speakers through the Zoom chat function. Um, also, if you missed the start, we will be um, editing the video of this uh, this meeting and uploading that in a few days time. So um, you will be able to catch up on, on the beginning of it. Um, Silad, I'm, I'm interested in, obviously we've had a, a really disruptive event over the last two years with, with the COVID pandemic. Has that influenced the purchasing decisions? And, and if so, how has it? Uh, before the pandemia, uh, we could hear lots of discussions about packaging and especially plastic packaging. And uh, as you probably remember as well, not usually not in the best context. Uh, however, the COVID crisis has changed this attitude. Uh, an approach to, towards packaging, especially initially during the COVID crisis, people uh, were very careful and uh, they, they were usually choosing products packed in, uh, uh, I mean, protected with packaging. Uh, although usually not uh, something innovative, simply uh, in, in any kind of uh, traditional packaging. So the demand to packaging rapidly increased and um, um, the most important was simply to pack your product in anything, just to protect it, uh, which seemed to make the sustainability aspects uh, less important than before. Of course, all we understand that this is a temporary process. Um, as, as for TI, we're always confident that in comparison to other packaging materials, uh, plastic is the one uh, which provides the better value with the lowest uh, environmental cost. Uh, our attitude is to say that uh, there is definitely too much um, packaging uh, used, uh, I mean, as unnecessarily used. Uh, so what we want, we want to optimize the value for, uh, of what we produce. How we do this, uh, we improve uh, the performance of our products. We increase the barrier properties of the films, um, um, which extend the shelf life of the products. And by that, uh, it's reducing the, the food waste, obviously. And in the same time, we offer the possibility of uh, replacing the traditional non-recyclable packaging structures with our monomaterials, uh, which, has, which are easy to, to recycle. And by that, we contribute uh, to, to the circular economy by uh, basically using our sustainable solutions. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anything any of the other speakers would like to to um, highlight with regard to the the impact of, of COVID and, and any different perspectives from, from other regions in Europe? Well, what I can confirm is um, also in North Europe that uh, people, tend, people tend to be more conservative um, also in our regions, definitely for, for these um, uh, projects which were ongoing with Nativia, for example, also sometimes with Extendo, but it was a very short period of time because COVID yeah, somehow became a bit of a, a well-known problem and people get back and, and thought about, okay, how, how, to, how to improve in this and how to go into the future. And, and, and so these pro projects came back um, and uh, not only came back, the volumes are now even higher than, than before and uh, the project number is also higher. So I can say, yes, there was a certain time frame where we can say it has an influence, but now it's it came back very quickly from our perspective in North Europe. Hmm. Thank you. So um, we've started talking about consumer attitudes. Um, I'd like to to burrow more into this this question and explore some of the the contrasts across Europe. Um, Vivian, maybe you could start off. Um, could you tell us a bit about how you see from from where you're sitting? Um, the way that consumers are influencing sustainability trends in the market and maybe the, the brand owners as well. Yeah, well, uh, consumers play a big role in the decision of uh, end users because uh, they comply with the with market and uh, so consumer is the end market. Um, they've been uh, 
for many years, numerous studies that has been showing the same thing, which is that consumers are more and more concerned about environment and uh, sustainability. So, and so let's say what I mean, what's my packaging like something very um, special is that is one of the components that is very visible to the consumer. So they see concretely the waste of material, let's say, uh, from packaging. They see the bean being you know, full um, of packaging. So this is really something concrete uh, to which they attach um, a lot of importance and uh, they consider that has a major environmental impact. Um, and um, and so there have been there have been demand from the consumer for the brand owners to supply more sustainable uh, packaging, um, and also so to, to to differentiate from competition, uh, end user has to to comply to to this demand, um, and that's from the resources. So we already talk about the option for moving from oil based or virgin um, resources to the disposal of the packaging so to make it recyclable and or compostable. Um, but one of the biggest challenge on this for brand owners is communication. So brand owners can make a lot of effort in delivering more sustainable, more environmental friendly packaging, but communication has to be really thought through um, to avoid green motion. And this is, I think, where brand owners has the biggest challenge um, because it's not, it's not an easy task to communicate on that without misleading the consumers. Mm. So I would say that this is a general trend um, in, in Europe at the moment. Mm. So uh, thank you. I'd, I'd like to, to think about the, the regional contrast in this, this question um, and, and that to what extent they, uh, they differ. Um, maybe we could start with you, Luca. Um, to what extent do you think consumers understand the, the positive role that packaging plays and, and to, to what extent are they seduced by the, the superficial green claims that you sometimes see on packaging that may not be uh, reflected in, in the, the actual sustainability impacts? Thanks, Tim, because theory, this is uh, really the main topic and it's very linked to what uh, uh, Vivienne was underlining before. I would say that uh, from a general perspective, uh, um, a very in important concept is that the value chain has to be really aware about what's behind and which drivers are behind producing a good and performing packaging. We were talking before about paper as a kind of comeback, no? And I add that paper is strongly perceived as we all know from consumer as the eco-friendly solution. But, but plastic is not the enemy. And on the contrary, it's one of the best solutions to avoid food waste. These, in my opinion, Tim, these uh, two simple statements well explain the current situation and clearly underline where we really need to improve. I skip now quite obvious, let's say, and redundant comments uh, related to how plastic floats into the sea. Of course, we, we talked again several times. We can accept, even accept and understand, I would add, that marketing is the, the most powerful link close to the consumer. But as a value chain, we need to do more in order to really get the consumer educated and increase customer awareness about different materials and solutions. The purpose, of course, is not to go into technical details, but to let everyone understand. And of course, I'm talking uh, uh, about those not coming from our world. No? that it's a matter of understanding to really be able to choose, evaluate and value the right solution. If uh, we can achieve such kind of awareness, we can really challenge also the consumer. That is maybe the last 
one in the supply chain, the value chain, but of course is the most important, no? Of course, because they, the consumer has to do its own part in choosing the right product. As a value chain, I guess we are already trying to develop new solutions to adopt and even propose these new solutions. And today, thanks to the circular economy, we are also circular economy uh, concept, let's say, and meaning, we are also trying to reinforce and vehiculate in the proper way the message more and more. But in my opinion, we are anyway missing on how to improve the message, on how uh, the message is really communicated, understood and perceived from the consumer when the consumer is at the supermarket. This is the real question, the real matter we need to work about. Um, as consumers, we can do so much trying to choose the right solutions, no? Uh, of course, uh, supporting uh, the way uh, to recycle materials because recycle, recycling means moving from waste to new products. And this is exactly what we want to do. And what Taglif, as Taglif, we are trying to do since years, investing so much in solutions such as Extendo and PP barrier solutions that can really merge shelf life from one side, shelf life needs and packaging easier to be recycled. Hmm. Bio solutions, as uh, Vivienne was underlining, are for sure the future, in my opinion. But there's so much that we can do in the meanwhile, pushing for monomaterial solution, solutions, rather than just consider, just consider bio or paper as the only eco-friendly solutions. Let's say that uh, I would uh, uh, try to, 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 to send a message saying that uh, changing the mindset about packaging solution perfectly working since year, it's years, it's always difficult. It's probably a risk, but this is the sense behind. We need to challenge everyone from the first resin producers till the last part of the value chain that are retailers and consumers, because moving towards new solutions means really be innovation leaders and the ones who change the future. This is my, my opinion about this. Thanks. Thank you. And, and Matthias, anything you'd yeah. like to, to add to that? Yeah, two small remarks from my side um, or comments. Um, of course, by definition, this is what Luca already stressed is um, a sustainable paper is a sustainable option. Uh, however, it needs to be supported by plastic film because paper itself is not a packaging. It needs to be supported uh, for barrier reasons, for food protection reasons, for sealability and so on. So this is, of course, also where we are asked to support our, our customers in this segment. Um, but what is strange, if you, if you see, and this is the perception of, of, of the end users, of the consumers in the market, when you see um, a, a trend um, that people, uh, the optics of material is very important for the people. And uh, it plays a really important role. So if you go to the grocery stores, for example, in Germany, you will recognize that a lot of packaging, and it's diversified, it's not in one special segment, is made from matte film. So we have a huge increase also in matte films because the appearance of, of matte seems to be natural and, 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 and maybe also a bit like paper touch and so on. So this is something uh, where we are also asked to support and uh, where, where we see in, in the supermarket shelves in Germany, especially that different segments are now uh, going for matte appearance instead of glossy because glossy is, is, is film and film is bad. Yeah, mm. this is what they say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and Matthias, um, we've, we've just been talking about consumer understanding of, of uh, the sustainability choices that they make. Um, I'm also interested in, in the consumer understanding of correct waste disposal practices. Um, to what extent do you think education and con uh, communication about you know, their behavior uh, with the, the packaging waste that they handle is uh, a problem or uh, what's, how does that look in, in your region? 
Yeah, I mean, um, of course, we have the experience here in, in, in Germany, especially um, being a bit of a pioneer in, in recycling. Uh, so we know and, and we have a certain timeline where we can look back and say, how did the consumers uh, work with this recycling issue and collection and separation of materials? So we can say, especially in Germany, the way of sorting materials and the collection is very well developed. Yeah, we have paper containers, glass, yeah, we have our yellow bags, um, the green waste and everything. So I believe that people understand because the way of living has changed in Germany. Uh, but of course, um, if, you, if you want to transfer it to other countries, and this is the necessity I see or we see, uh, the governments need to provide the means to collect and sort waste. And this is very important because some countries are more advanced than others, of course, and we have to learn from each other. So to support um, the environmental, uh, I, I, environmental protection, we should collect the best practice and introduce also to other countries, of course. Yeah? This is what we believe would be the right way to do. Yeah? Hmm. Um, coming back to the consumers in Germany, we, we can say there are, there are surveys which you can find and uh, about the behavior of German con uh, consumers concerning waste separation. And after that long time of recycling in our country, um, it is really said that 60 to 95% of the people claim for themselves to um, uh, separate materials. Yeah? The exact percentage always depends on the, on the uh, type of waste. Yeah? So the highest number, 95 from 100 people say, we are collecting papers and separated. The green waste is only 60% and the rest is somewhere in between. So there's a high mental um, uh, development to to and assess, about necessity to, to change also in the way of life. Yeah? Um, so if you, if you go to Germany and you drive through, you can also find places, collection places where the containers are located, but also the private households have their private bins for green waste and for the different sorts of waste. So um, yeah, this is, this is what we see here, here over here in Germany. Thank you. Um, any other perspectives, anything that, that contrasts with that across Europe? Um, Silad, I guess Eastern Europe is in a slightly different position in, uh, in terms of infrastructure. I would say not, yeah. not so no? much, maybe infrastructure, yes, but, but uh, in general, I can uh, confirm that we also have uh, the selective collection of the waste uh, for the last many years. We talk about 20 or 30 years already. Uh, that is being selected uh, originally started from glass paper and uh, and then pet bottles now it's also uh, alucans for example being collected that way and um, and uh, the number of points where you can do this the containers and so on is growing constantly uh, and the uh, majority of people uh, participate in this activity they understand the importance of this activity and they contribute uh, of course uh, the, the situation is far not perfect uh, therefore, um, not only Hungary, but uh, the, also the other countries in the region, they have uh, their, their um, plans uh, for improvement and percentages uh, to collect uh, this, this waste, I mean, in, in a higher extent. Uh, but obviously, uh, there is a lot uh, to do. Uh, you need to, to change the approach of the people, uh, to educate them a lot, and of course, to, to put uh, large efforts uh, to, to, to reach these targets. But otherwise, uh, the, the situation is not so bad, I would say. So, and not so much different from, uh, from uh, a Western European situation. If you go around, uh, you see a lot of these points sometimes, sometimes overloaded uh, by the, the collective waste, for example. So people didn't really use it, and it's, it is good to, to, to see, basically. Thank you. Well, we've we've alluded to uh, the infrastructure uh, context uh, for for waste management, and I think we all understand that a, a key enabler of making progress there is um, investment in in having the appropriate infrastructure and collection and recycling, etc., to to make that material loop go round. Um, so I'm interested in in your views and perspectives, again, looking at the different regions at uh, plastic taxes that seem to be coming in um, in certain national markets. We have uh, in the UK uh, something in the pipeline very soon. Um, Vivian, maybe you could start off. Yes, so the tax. <laughs> I think it's not a subject that I would like to talk about, but uh, it is here, so we cannot do without it. Especially that uh, I just want to remind, like first, like to set up the context is that uh, 
the tax first come on the uh, European level. So Europe, um, he said, he has a tax of, uh, he's thinking of setting a tax of 800 euros per ton um, for all the non-recycled uh, plastic packaging. So this tax, uh, so the way that actually that apply this tax, it's a, it's a strange way somehow, because this is applied to the state member and not to any specific industry or any specific company. So the state will have, so for instance, the French government will be, uh, um, will be, um, we have the liability to pay for this tax. Now each, each members of the EU, so each country member, will decide on how to finance this tax. And then we will see disparity within the country. So for instance, in France, they do not think about uh, relaying this tax to the packaging industry or to the brand owners putting a package uh, product on the market. Um, they, 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 they see it as um, a part of the budget of the state. While uh, in the UK, uh, well, in the UK, it's, it's again different because they're not in the EU anymore. Uh, but they think about implementing a tax of 200 pounds uh, per ton of, uh, of, of packaging with less than 30% uh, uh, recycled content. Yet in Spain, they have a different way of financing this tax because they are in Europe. So they are concerned by the 800, 800 euros per ton tax uh, by implementing a tax of 450 euros per ton for every non-reusable -re plastic packaging. So, it's another thing that like UK is talking about a tax on um, packaging with less than 30% recycled content. Spain is talking about non-reusable uh, plastic packaging. So it's really like the decision of Europe is leading like to a very different uh, wide range of, uh, of, uh, of different taxation. And I think that my colleague could, uh, could even give more example in, uh, in their own region. Um, so it, it means that yes, like the tax, the tax on non-recycled packaging as Europe is, is doing it is a good thing, uh, I think, because it will push innovation and it will push to accelerate, uh, to put on the market recycl recyclable material and have like the, 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 the circular economy loop that we're all looking for, uh, which is to recycle, use the recycle into the, the new packaging and, uh, and close the, the, the circle. Um, however, um, each member, like the, the, the each member, has to apply this tax in a very uh, common way to make it uh, more efficient on, on the ground. Thank you very much. Well, let's let's just quickly get some perspectives from the other regions. Uh, Luca, um, anything that you'd like to comment on this this landscape uh, of uh, taxation in, in the Southern Europe region? Well, let's say that, you know, here, uh, also in Italy, you know, uh, the plastic tax was, has to be implemented uh, several times, but at the end, uh, uh, they decided to, uh, to postpone, you know, and uh, in my opinion, um, again, always talking from a general perspective, there is a lot of potential already ongoing, and we did so much in order to really be able to recycle. We have uh, very interesting, uh, um, let's say, guidelines also to really understand how to separate, how to support recycling in, in, uh, in our country. Maybe now something is really starting from a legislation point of view. So we are really trying to give a clear and strong message in order to understand uh, what means circular economy and how recycling is linked to circular economy and to uh, environment, you know, uh, support, let's say, you know. There is, uh, at the time being, um, there is a tax uh, that, uh, if I remember well, was from 130 euro for recyclable uh, packaging till to 640 euro, something like this, for all the packaging that cannot be recycled in the proper way. So the message is again, clear and strong. And sorry if I'm not able to really jump out from the consumer perspective, but as a consumer, once again, 
once again, I guess that all the, 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 the main part of, of the, the work that as a supply chain we are doing and we have done has to be played there. Because talking, for example, with my wife sometimes when I go to the supermarket, okay, I'm coming from this world, I can explain a lot of things. And my wife or also my friends cannot really understand properly how these solutions that they are aware eh, from, a certain, from a certain point of view, but are really valued and underlined and can be chosen when they are at the supermarket. So that's the main point once again. But a lot is, a lot of, is, is already ongoing. And now we are probably and uh, finally coming to a really to a real boost, let's say, in order to to to, to value all the efforts that again uh, we proposing these solutions and our customers adopting and trying to propose in these solutions to the brand owners uh, are are are, are uh, let's say uh, have developed uh, uh, during the last uh, the last years. Thank you, Luca. Um, Matthias, anything you'd like to add? Yes, I would say um, if you consider costs and uh, then we as people tend to learn when it costs a lot of money. And uh, just as an example, uh, we are talking about the tax. Yes, this is one thing, but um, and we are not that far as at least not in Germany, but uh, we have our ideas and we go that we go in this direction. Um, but if you think about um, a pet bottle deposit, which we have in Germany, and it's also a long time uh, thing and, and people, and it costs money and simply people have to grab in their pocket and, and to see when I don't collect it, when I don't get it back, give it back, I don't get the money. And then people start learning. Yeah? And, and this is uh, where I say, yes, packaging has to have a value and you have to give it a value. And then we start rethink our processes and our behaviors. This is how I see it and my experience in this country. Thank you. And, and Silad, finally, um, what's, what's the picture, at least in the, the European Union member states in, in, in your eastern region? Uh, look, uh, we in Eastern Europe usually follows the Western European uh, regulations uh, with certain delay and there is no difference uh, also from this perspective. Uh, considering our two most uh, important markets, relevant markets, I would say Hungary, which is our home country, where our uh, East European plant is located, and our biggest market, which is Poland. Uh, at the moment, we only have in place so-called product fee, uh, which is paid by the manufacturers and importers of those products which are pegged, supposing that afterwards this, not be, uh, this will not be uh, exported from the, from the, the country. Uh, so this, um, the, the target of this uh, uh, product fee is obviously to create some sources uh, uh, for reduction of damages caused by the waste and so on. Uh, however, uh, this product fee is related to any kind of packaging, not specifically dedicated for uh, recycled packaging, I mean, and, and it's not uh, directly re related to recyc uh, recyclability as such. Uh, for example, in Hungary, um, for plastic films, for a kilogram of plastic films, you have to pay at the moment uh, 18 cents per kilogram for all plastic films, including biodegradable ones, for example. That it doesn't make any difference between different kinds of products. So this is the, the current regulation. Uh, as for future plans, uh, the Hungarian regulation of environmental uh, product charges is being reworked at the moment. We even have a deadline, which is January of 2023. And it is expected that uh, the new regulation will be, will be better supporting recyclable packaging or the non-sustainable ones. And uh, by that, it will support also our activities in promotion of our sustainable solutions, definitely. So this is what we, we expect from the new regulations coming from next year. Thank you very much. Well, um, I think I'm going to end the, the general discussion now and give us a chance to address at least some of the questions that the audience have been um, submitting in the meantime. So thanks, everyone, for the questions you've sent. Um, I can tell you in advance that I'm not going to get through all of them. So I'm going to share in the chat the, there you go, it's gone now, the LinkedIn um, profiles of each of our four speakers. So if um, you want to follow up, if there are questions you've asked that we haven't had a chance to, to address now, um, that gives you an, uh, an opportunity to uh, approach our speakers directly. Um, but we still have 
seven or eight minutes left, so let's get through as many as we can. Um, first of all, there's an interesting question here about uh, collaboration and the kinds of um, value chain organizations and industry organizations that uh, you can um, be involved in. And I, I'm sure everyone in this meeting is, is you know, aware of the importance of collaboration and alignment. And particularly, I, I guess one of the big themes that we've had from all of the comments that our speakers have given is the, the sheer complexity of sustainability challenges and the need for alignment and more uh, harmonization across some of these uh, challenges that we're working on. So I think it's an important question to, to pick up on. So the question that we've, we've been asked is about what are the key organizations and platforms that an organization, a company like Tagleaf Industries needs to be active in, and, and also the, the respective roles of the, the re regional or national uh, associations and these more pan-European projects such as CFLEX. Um, I'll give you all a chance to um, respond to this because I'd, I'd be really interested to hear about the, um, the the more national organizations that I might not be aware of, but let's start with Matthias. Yeah, yes, um, thank you. Um, uh, I refer to the HGVU, which is the um, working group of packaging and environmental organization in, in Germany, which is a, um, a gathering of, of uh, along all the supply chain yeah, of companies, which are from recyclers to brand owners, conversion, everything. and and this is the most important thing. This group together forms ideas. Uh, this is a platform to, to, to think about how can we create the future? How can we find solutions and a common approach? And the main thing is that these guys have a direct contact to the government. So the discussion, the direct discussion with this group, with the HGVU and the government, there's a direct link. And so we see for us also a possibility to inform the, the politics about what is feasible, what is possible. And it's very, it's utmost important that we participate in such organizations like uh, HGVU, because we see that we cannot do it alone. Yeah, we have our own uh, ideas and approach, of course, but we all work together and we and the future is not formed by TechLeaf alone, but a group of uh, supply chain uh, uh, involved companies. And so therefore we go this way uh, this is one of our policies and our ideas, um, and it's very important as we consider it. Thank you. I'm just going to share the link to AGVU in case anyone wants to, yep. uh, to uh, follow that up. Thank you. Um, Luca, how about in, in the Southern European region, any key organizations we should be aware of? Well, yes, for sure, Tim. Uh, I would uh, underline the role of uh, GFLEX, for example, acting in Italy. Uh, GFLEX is an association of uh, all flexible packaging producers for food packaging, pharma and industrial applications. Uh, there are several meetings uh, and uh, of course we are partners also of this association. And uh, I guess uh, this is a perfect example underlining again what Matthias was already, uh, <laughs> was already putting on, on the table, let's say. The most important thing is to really share and coordinate in order to develop and spread the message. We need to develop and then to convey in the proper way the message. So when, when, when we participate to GFLEX meeting, for example, uh, I could tell you that uh, the, the aim is to continuously, continuously discuss, align and propose new solutions facing, of course, new market needs and challenges. And another important thing is that um, sometime, maybe almost every time I would say, there is always a kind of uh, support also from, uh, uh, how can I say, um, there is always, oh, oh, also po um, political uh, representatives are involved in order to really try to convey then the best the message where we need to take decisions because sometimes we can approach of course also from the opposite side of the value chain we need to work 
at 360 degrees, as we all know very, very well. And uh, proceeding like this, we already seen that uh, a lot of improvements and a lot of new discussions uh, have been developed, have been approached again, also from consumer point of view. I guess that this is the right and most important way to really, to really try to achieve our target. Thank you. Vivian, anything you'd like to add? Yes, sure. Um, well, it's, there's many, many benefits to be part of the regional organization. <clears throat> the difficult is that we can focus only for the here. Um, Vivian, I, I can't hear you very clearly. Maybe if you hold your microphone. Is that better? That's better. Thank sure. you. So um, in France, we are part of Elipso, who is uh, the association of um, plastic packaging um, manufacturers. And uh, in um, in uh, sorry in UK, we are part of the uh, British uh, Plastic uh, Foundation. So we are we are in the in the in the association in both countries. Um, I can talk more about Elipso because. We are active members of, uh, of this association, and I myself um, uh, did a lot of work with them. Um, so I would say that it's a two way, two ways um, benefits or a way of acting as well. So we, through this kind of organization, we do collect information from the market and what is expected from supplier like us who are supplying the raw materials. So in terms of innovation and what products we should offer to the market to be recyclable, for instance, uh, regarding the, the, what, what is demanded to be recycled. Uh, but it's also one way for us to import uh, sustainability action. So one simple example is that uh, the, the project of the PP Flexible Recycling Stream in France has been impulsed by the creation of a task force at Ellipso with their members, so producers of plastic packaging, to put, let's say, not, I wouldn't say pressure, but to come forward with a plan, with data on what is put on the market to show that it's actually valuable to pull up the stream and, um, and present it to the body responsible for that, who in France is called CTO. And hence, CTO has, the, has taken, let's say, the baby in their hand. And uh, now we see that like, concretely that there's uh, a project that has started uh, last year and that is supposed to come to life uh, on life in 2023. So it's not only one way, like we getting information or we, um, we influence, um, let's say, government bodies, but we can also uh, impose some sustainability, concrete action on the ground as well. Thank you very much. Silat, <clears throat> would you like to add anything? Uh, just to add that, of course, we are uh, also active from this perspective in the region. We are a member of Hungarian Association of Packaging, active member. Uh, we participate in their conferences, events, uh, meetings, and so on. And uh, what I see the most important is that, yes, uh, they, first of all, uh, transfer knowledge uh, and coordinate the activity of uh, different members of the industry. And very important, as also mentioned by my colleagues, that they keep... Uh, relation um, uh, and contact to the government. Uh, they are participating in the creation of the new regulation and legislation. And uh, I can even report that we have very positive cases uh, last year when, uh, for example, they supported us in, um, in withdrawing of some, some, um, uh, so, some actions which would be helpful for us exactly. And uh, so with support of this association, we, we, we could reach and, uh, and won in the discussion with the government and practically, because just to give a concrete example, they wanted to put a band on 50 micron films at all, which would be very, uh, let's say, sensitive for us. Uh, thank you to this organization, they understood that this is not a proper step and finally this, this uh, regulation was withdrawn by the government. Just an example how it works in the reality. Okay, thank you. Well, we are almost out of time. And um, we obviously forgive people if they have uh, meetings to join now, but I'd like to just put one more question to you because we've had two questions that are quite similar from the audience, um, both asking about the importance and the, the perspectives of bio-based polymer films, so bio-polypropylene, bio-polyethylene, 
Um, another question asking about um, yeah, bio-based polymers in, in films. Um, do you see that as a, a key um, component in, in um, proceeding with um, sustainability and in, in flexible packaging and, and labeling materials? Um, who would like to take that one? Vivian. Maybe Tim, I can, uh, can you, <clears throat> maybe I can start uh, and uh, maybe my colleague can complete what I'm going to say. Uh, but uh, what's interesting with the bio-based uh, material is that uh, it helps a lot in reducing uh, carbon footprint. That's uh, a fact, that's for sure. Um, the second thing is that it's actually widely available right now. Um, so there is no, unlike PCR uh, chemical or PCR mechanical, um, there's no constraint. So you know that PCR mechanicals is a constraint, especially in our um, end use market to fit food, uh, to get food approval to use PCR uh, mechanical content. So that actually limits uh, the application and the resourcing of PCR mechanical. Then we have PCR chemical, which is food approved. However, it's really the start of, uh, of the solution and it's not uh, available on a scale that uh, could uh, fulfill the, the, the market requirements right now. Um, and also uh, chemical, like, you know, there is a lot to do in the process of chemical recycling uh, in terms of energy consumption. So uh, we have to be very uh, careful um, in, uh, in this regard. Uh, while biobase is actually widely available and also it's um, using a byproduct of an existing industry because our bio base is made mainly from uh, cooking oil. So it doesn't use uh, virgin resources. So it's like we, let's say, I think in English we say like we, we kill two birds with one stone uh, by actually offering bio base and also non-virgin material. So definitely this is, this is a, a concrete solution today uh, to help to reduce uh, carbon uh, carbon footprint. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to wrap up there because um, it's already five minutes past the hour here. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, um, for, for joining today. Um, in case you arrived halfway through or, or later, we'll be uploading the recording of this uh, session today on the event platform in a few days' time, so you can watch it on demand later on. Um, just to, to let you know, also, we've got a few more of these interactive Zoom meetings coming up um, on Monday, Tuesday and Thursday next week, looking at um, topics such as flexibles, adhesives and, and labelling. Um, so you're welcome to join us again then. Um, but for now, thanks everyone for joining us today. Thanks for your questions and thanks especially to our four speakers, Matthias Bredo, Luca you. Bianchetti, Selad Chato and Vivienne Pontio. Thank you, Tim. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye, Thank you very everyone. Much. Pleasure. Bye bye. Goodbye, everyone. Ciao. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you.